For our project, we used machine learning to suggest songs for Spotify playlists. According to the International Federation of Music, curated playlists have gradually replaced thematic broadcasts in the public's music consumption. Consumers often use playlists to encapsulate moods, categorize their music, and enhance music listening events. Each listener has underlying music tastes and preferences, which makes playlist creation highly complex and multidimensional. Many streaming services use machine learning to aid consumers in creating playlists because it will differentiate their company in the streaming market. Improving recommendation systems has been a heavily researched area as companies want to improve user engagement with their content. One of the most prevalent issues is making the first few recommendations when there is little information collected on a user. This is known as the cold start problem, and many researchers have attempted to address this issue in novel ways. The dataset we're using was provided by Spotify and consists of 1 million user-created playlists. Each playlist in the dataset has a title, track list, and other metadata fields, and each track in the playlist includes the song title, artist name, album name, and other relevant metadata. To the right, we see an example of the data that we're using. Our goal with this project was to create our own machine learning algorithm to suggest songs for users to add to playlists. These playlists may be completely new, with no features despite a user-defined name, or well-established with many tracks. And then present these new suggested songs for users to add to their playlists, which would aid listeners in creating new playlists or enhancing old ones. First, we had to clean our data. We used regular expressions to standardize track and artist names for natural language processing, and we created PANDAS data frames, um, which include fields such as the playlist name, number of tracks, and list of track URIs. The main methods we used for our project was KNN, forward feature selection and variance threshold, naive Bayes and random forest, and natural language processing, which in particular we used to solve the cold start problem. For KNN, we developed a classification model to assign a playlist to a cluster of songs, and then recommend songs for the playlist based on the cluster. To create the initial clusters, we sampled top songs from a variety of genres using the Spotify API, and then clustered those songs. We tested the model with a different number of clusters between 1 and 50, and then plotted the cross-validation accuracy against the number of clusters. We also created confusion matrices, which are how we visualize performance of the methods. In this example, we use the playlist on the left to generate the song rec recommendations we can see on the right, and we have the confusion matrix above. We selected 45 as the number of clusters that maximized the cross-validation accuracy, which was an accuracy of 49.42%. As you can see, with an accuracy of about 50%, genre is not a perfect representation of accuracy. This makes sense because songs on a playlist aren't always from the same genre, and songs within the same genre can vary considerably. For the next method, we use variance threshold. We use forward feature selection and variance threshold to generate the features with the least variance within a playlist. What this means is we took all the features of the songs in a playlist, which could be like danceability, loudness, tempo, etc., um, and we found the variance for each of the features, and then across all the features, we found the average variance. For any feature with a variance less than the average variance, we selected it as an important feature. We then generated recommendations using the Spotify API, and using the mean and standard deviation of each feature, we calculated the z-score of each recommendation against the relevant features, and then sorted the recommendations based on z-score. We gave the system 80% of a playlist to use as training data, and the other 20% to use as testing data. Some of the difficulties we found here is that taking such a large portion of the playlist to train the model reduces the chances that the recommendations will match um, the ground truth other songs on the playlist. For example, with a playlist of 10 songs, only two songs would be uh, able to be used to test the model. So there's a very small chance that one of the songs that we'd suggest would actually match the ground truth of the two songs that were on the um, playlist. So a better way of testing this model would be to present the suggestions um, to the people who own a specific playlist and ask them personally if the songs we're recommending are ones they'd consider adding to their playlist. And when we anecdotally did this with one of our own playlists and a member of our team, we found that there were several matches within the first 20 recommendations that were considered to be good recommendations. The next method we did was Naive Bayes. So the first thing we had to do for Naive Bayes was decide on a method for creating a classifying label for each of the songs, and we chose genre of the song. We used the Spotify API to gather samples across genres to generate a data set of songs with the correct genre as its label. We used the Gaussian Naive Bayes package from SKLearn 
and then we took the average of each feature on a playlist so for all the features on a playlist we took the average to what made it seem like the playlist was just one big song and then assigned that playlist to the most relevant genre and then recommended songs to the playlist based on that genre in this case we used 90 percent of the data for training and 10 percent for testing in our results we correctly classified the genre of the song with an accuracy of 36.7 percent and as a side note as seen in our confusion matrix the model classifies songs as edm at a very high proportion we're unsure why this is um, but we thought it was worth mentioning the next method we used was random forest for this method we had to again decide on classifying labels for the songs and use genre just like we did in naive bays one of the downsides we found to the random forest was the amount of hyperparameters. We used SKLearn's grid search CV package to do an exhaustive search over specified parameter values to return the optimal results. This takes a lot of time to compute accuracy across different combinations of parameters. Again, we used 90% of the data for training and 10% for testing. As a result, the best parameters we found were 200 trees in the forest with a max depth of 15, a minimum number of samples required to split an internal node of 5, and a minimum number of samples required to be a leaf node of 1. As a side note, um, this could be a sign of overfitting. We correctly classified the genre of the songs with an accuracy of 50%, which is significant improvement above the naive Bayes model. We also did some feature engineering. We added each feature square to our data set to see if the results would improve. There was an improvement to an accuracy of 50.5%, but as you can see, this isn't really a significant improvement. To the right, you can see our confusion matrix and you can see our feature importance, which includes the, the feature engineering and the squared features. The last um, method that we did was natural, natural language processing, and this was used to solve our cold start problem. So we started by comparing playlist titles and some initial issues we found was that many playlists have words or emojis that the dictionary we were using was not trained on, which made the results indistinguishable from one another. Our solution was to compare the playlist titles using the similarity function in the library, which we found works really well for the cold start problem. We found a dictionary that works for short phrases and single words, and then checked for playlists in the given data set that have similar titles to our example playlist title. Now, for example, we had an empty playlist called America. We ran our NLP method and we gave it the word America and it showed us five playlists with the most similar titles. And to the right, we can see those five playlists. It was America, 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 etc. And then we found these playlists with the similar titles and we generated our recommendations from those playlists. This makes a lot of sense because user created playlists, um, the titles relate to the content of the um, playlists. And so this works really well for the cold start case. In conclusion, our results suggest that unsupervised approach works better because supervised learning relies heavily on having good labels for each data point, and it is difficult to get good labels without manually going through thousands of playlists and songs. Unsupervised learning approach does not have the same reliance on good labels, so it's a better candidate for playlist song recommendations. While at around 50% accuracy, our best results were lower than what we may have hoped, this speaks to the difficulty in, of running machine learning on music. In future models, we'll likely need to spend more time on feature engineering to capture more aspects of the songs in order to accurately cluster them. Here are our references, and thank you.